Hello and welcome to Scout Report, where today we're looking at some of the summer's biggest upgrades, with three signings that could transform their club's fortunes in 2021. Let's kick it off. Diogo Jota for Divock Origi In our Scout Report back in June, we said it would be one of the biggest mistakes of the summer if Liverpool decided not to strengthen in attack. So if the Reds win the league again, we expect to receive a medal. Jurgen Klopp showed his PL rivals how transfers are done with the signing of Diogo Jota, securing the Portuguese's signature within 24 hours of his interest being reported, and the 23-year-old fits the club's needs perfectly, with the experience to contribute now and the talent to develop into a star. At 50 million euros, Jota hasn't come cheap, but he has two years of PL football to his name, bagging 22 goals and assists in that time. However, 14 of those came in 2018-19 and just 8 last season, so you'd be forgiven for thinking that Jota's form has dipped, but actually the underlying numbers suggest he's getting better. XG predicted him to hit 15 goal involvements in 2019-20, which works out to around 0.6 per 90 minutes, the same as Aubameyang and Hung Min Son, and way better than Divock Origi on 0.4, theoretically Liverpool's main attacking backup. Despite a goal in 2019's Champions League final, Origi has clearly failed to convince Klopp. He played just 680 league minutes in 2019-20, less than Matip and Lovren, and while he did score four in that time, Milner and Naby Keita had similar goal output in similar minutes from less attacking positions. You'd expect Origi to be a downgrade on the established front three, but he's further off than Liverpool would like, especially given the creativity in the rest of the squad. When you combine shots and chances created, Sadio Mane gets or lays on 4.4 goal-scoring opportunities for the team each game. Roberto Firmino is narrowly ahead on 4.5 and Mo Salah is a long way clear on 6 a game, among the best records in the league. Origi, meanwhile, can only produce 2.9 a match, while at 3.8, Jota is much closer to the required level, as well as being 18 months younger than the Belgian and 5 years younger than the other three forwards. Like most of Nuno Espirito Santo's Wolves side, he's also an excellent presser. Jota closes down opponents roughly 23 times per 90 minutes, 12th among Premier League forwards and more than anyone at Anfield last year except Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. And his versatility should allow him to deputise for any of Klopp's attackers too, having played across the front line and in the hole during his spell in the Midlands. Reliable, gifted and experienced, Jota is the perfect signing for a Liverpool team in need of some youth. In a season compressed by the global pandemic, his presence on the bench could be the difference between another title and another second place. Alvaro Morata for Gonzalo Higuain For some, replacing Higuain with Morata is a like-for-like -like move. Both of them have developed reputations as subpar finishers, unfairly in Higuain's case at least, and both have been used not for their own goal scoring, but to extract the maximum from Cristiano Ronaldo, who has never been one to participate in possession or team defending, and, at 35, isn't about to start now. However, despite returning to Juventus on the back of three mediocre seasons with Chelsea and Atletico Madrid, averaging only 11 league goals across those campaigns, Morata should offer a big improvement on Higuain. The Spaniards' best seasons to date came in 2015-16 and 2016-17, the first at Juve and the second at Real Madrid. And in Turin, he'll reunite with key teammates from those seasons, in Paolo Dybala and Cristiano Ronaldo. In the Juventus spell, Morata was often used in a front two with Mario Mandzukic, and with the Croatian occupying defenders and winning aerial duels, Morata was able to use his mobility to run in behind, with his 1.9 dribbles per 90 that year the best of his career. He was also at his best creatively back then, creating 1.7 chances a game and notching 7 league assists, in the process helping Dybala to 19 league goals, one of the Argentinians' two most prolific campaigns. Morata himself contributed to a goal in Serie A every 104 minutes, and with Dybala stalling over the last two seasons in the absence of a defined role, the return of his former partner, who is willing to interchange with him, could make the most of his varied skill set especially with Ronaldo playing the Mandzukic role in his own way, drawing defenders to him. In 2016-17 at Real Madrid, Morata was largely a super sub, making just 14 starts in La Liga but clocking up 19 goals and assists, or one every 70 minutes. But it wasn't just his presence in front of goal which made him useful that year. At Juve, Morata had become a relentless and sometimes reckless presser, making more tackles, interceptions and fouls than in any previous year and he continued that trend back in Spain, helping to shore up a side full of stars who didn't pull their weight out of possession, like Ronaldo, Bale and Isco. And with Atletico, the 27-year-old has reached even greater heights, 
completing more defensive actions per game with the Rocky Blancos than ever before, suggesting that he can do the hard yards in Juve's attack and allow his teammates freedom to create. But Morata hasn't lost his goal threat, whatever his patchy time at Chelsea might lead you to believe. Though he only registered 12 goals and 2 assists under Simeone last year, expected goals suggest he should have had 15 goals and 5 assists at a rate of 0.83 xG per 90, better than Higuain's 0.72. Add in the younger player's ability to beat a man and his pressing and you have a much more rounded attacking threat, and one who is set to earn just €96,000 a week from the Bianconeri compared to the obscene €260,000 a week Higuain was reportedly collecting. If he can rediscover the form he showed previously alongside CR7 and Dybala, Morata could yet make good on the potential he's recently threatened to waste. Alex Tellers for Luke Shaw at the time of writing this one is yet to be confirmed, but Man United's move for Porto left-back Alex Tellez makes a lot of sense. Despite the promise shown by Brandon Williams, relying on a 20-year-old with just a thousand league minutes to his name in a tight top four race would be foolish. Meanwhile Luke Shaw, while competent, is arguably the worst starting left-back at any big side in the Premier League, following the arrivals of Chilwell at Chelsea and Reguilon at Spurs. Tellez, on the other hand, has won three domestic titles and has 33 Champions League appearances under his belt, more than all but five players at Old Trafford. And more importantly, he can balance out Aaron Wan-Bissaka on the other flank. The Englishman is a brilliant defender, but last season created just 0.7 chances a game, the third lowest tally among outfield players at United. By comparison, Tellez created two chances a game, and over the last three seasons has ranked fifth, fourth and first for key passes in the whole of the Portuguese league. As a consequence, his goal and assist output is as good as an attacker's. Last season, he was involved in 19 league goals, two more than Roberto Firmino, as well as 12 the year before and 16 before that. However, there is a note of caution here, with 36 of those 47 goal involvements coming from penalties, free kicks and corners. Obviously, set pieces are an important part of attacking play, but Tellez is unlikely to take spot kick or free kick duty away from Bruno Fernandes, and so we'd expect to see his productivity drop, though even with dead ball situations stripped out, he lays on more chances per game than Shaw. Defensively, Tellez is decent if unremarkable. He's averaged between 3 and 4 tackles and interceptions per 90 across his time with Porto, which is actually better than it sounds, given that the Dragons usually have around 60% possession and their defenders need to make fewer interventions. He's also good in the air, winning over 60% of the headers he contests, again topping Shaw on 57% and Wan-Bissaka on an alarmingly low 41%. The only concern here may be the Brazilian's physicality. With under one dribble completed per game, he's not going to burst down the wing, and he's also getting dribbled past more regularly, getting beaten by opponents around 40% of the time, ranking him just below average for fullbacks across Europe. In a tougher division with better attackers, that could see him exposed, or he might simply play more conservatively with the Red Devils, who are less dominant in their league than Porto. Despite the caveats, Tellez would be a solid signing for the reported fee of 25 million euros, a decent chunk of which Solskjaer could make up by selling Shaw. After years of overpaying for players they thought could fix all their problems, some reliable squad members might be just what United need. So those were three of the biggest upgrades of the summer in our opinion, but what about yours? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell to never miss a video. We'll see you next time.